So the title of uh, today's message is Hope for the Best. Hope for the Best. And so since today we celebrate, as I said before, the day of Pentecost, this anointing of the Holy Spirit, this anointing of the Holy Spirit um, uh, uh, gives uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. It, 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 it really does uh, give us the hope of glory, right? Um, it really helps for hope to abound in uh, our lives. Um, and, 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 and so it's so important that we understand that uh, this anointing of the Holy Spirit is not just for us. Yes, it does um, do us incredibly good, but it is also so that we can share it with others, so that we can share it with others. Amen? Through that good news, through that good news um, uh, that Jesus taught us and continues to teach us even today. If you look at Romans, Romans chapter 15, verse 13, and um, uh, Sister Gray will put it here on the chat. Romans chapter 15, verse 13, it says, may the God of hope, okay, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, okay, here we go. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. That through the power of the Holy Spirit, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we may live in hope. Yes, we can have hope for a better world. We can have hope for better lives, for health, to, for health and for all other things. But I want you to keep in mind that when we're talking about, ultimately what we're talking about in hope is the hope of glory, the hope of what comes after this life, right? After this life. Without the Holy Spirit, without this anointing of the Holy Spirit, without us being sealed, by the Holy Spirit when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior, we then live a life without hope. And what does that look like? Well, just take a look at the world today. Take a look at the world. Just take a look at the news, the newspapers, whatever you want. Take a listen to the radio. When we are uh, living lives without hope, you are going to see things like suicides. You're going to see things like these mass murders. You're going to see a lack of care for life, for human life. You're going to see people behaving the way you see people behaving. So, so that is what we mean when we say we, this world needs hope. And so how do we do that? We do that by connecting or reconnecting, in many cases, with our God, with our relationship, tightening our relationship with God, and then coming together as the church, coming together and uh, with hope, with hope for the world. I don't know how to, how to put it, but all I can tell you is that there was never a better time for the Christian church than today. And I know that somebody could have said that back in the 60s or in the 70s, right? It's almost like every decade we've got stuff going on, but I'm saying it today. There is no better time for the church. That means you and me and millions like us. But literally coming together with that message of hope that Christ gives. Not, not political messages and not this is what's good for us or these people are no good and we're good and we're the only ones going to heaven and these people are not going. No, no, that's not, that's not the message of good news. That's not the message of Jesus Christ. I'm not sure why people keep putting it out there. 
the, the, the message of Jesus Christ is that he loves his entire creation and that he wants us to love one another. The reason that you see so much going on in our world today is because people are not connecting with God. People are not connecting with Jesus Christ. Do you realize that when you hear about these shootings that are going on, and when you look at the images that they put out of these people, look closely, and you'll even see some of these guys doing the shooting, right? Some of these gang members wearing crucifixes. How crazy is that? How crazy is that? How mixed up is that? How confused is that? A lack of hope, a lack of love. And if there's one thing that Jesus teaches us is about what? Loving one another and about hope. The word hope, uh, depending on, on the translation of, of, of the Bible, uh, appears anywhere from 155 times in our Bible and up. That's how important it is. Not something that just breezes by one in one verse or two. 155 times, and in some other translations, it can even be uh, more. How important is hope? It's so important that Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verse 12, he says, rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. That's the one, two, three combination. That's what Paul is saying. He's saying rejoice in hope. Notice how he puts that first. Right? That hope of glory. Right? When we, when we, when we think about the Holy Spirit, what do you think about? Well, I think of it as God in us. Jesus in us. Rejoice that that is your situation. And then it says, be patient in tribulation. So you think that there weren't bad things happening back then, that there were somehow people just floating around and everything was great, fine, and dandy? No. No. Read scripture. Study it. See how these apostles uh, were put to death in many cases. Tribulations have been around forever and will continue to be around as long as we are in this corruptible uh, situation. But still, Paul says, even while he was going through his tribulations, we should say the same thing as we go through our tribulations. Rejoice in hope. Rejoice in the Holy Spirit. Rejoice in the fact that you know that God is with you. And then it says, remain constant in prayer. There is power in prayer. And so, and so Paul is saying uh, that God is saying, remain constant in prayer. How is your prayer life? How is your prayer life? All right. Self-checks are important consistently self-checking on how we are because sometimes we get to the point where we get so wound up with everything going on in our lives and everything going on uh, in the world that we begin to quote unquote lose hope and so we start to pray less so check on your prayer life how's that how's that uh, uh, going in Philippians it says, uh, it's Philippians chapter four, verse four, it says, again, rejoice in the Lord always. So you notice that in one part, Paul is saying, you know, rejoice in hope. Uh, now he says, rejoice in the Lord, right? So you'll hear, you hear about the relationship with God in many different ways. You'll hear it as, as rejoicing in hope. You'll hear it as rejoicing in love. You'll hear it as rejoicing in the Lord always. 
again, I will say, he repeats it, rejoice. What is Paul saying and why is he repeating it? He's repeating it because a lot of people are losing hope. I am saying it today because I know that a lot of people are losing hope. You see how it just continues, it's almost like history continues to repeat itself, right? And so that's why the word of God is alive. So no matter whether we were living in Paul's times or we're living today or we're going to be living, people that are going to be living in the future, the word of God remains the same and it remains alive. And it says, rejoice in God, rejoice in the Lord, rejoice in hope. Even while you're going through your trials and tribulations, don't let go of God. Don't let go of hope. Don't let go of that anointing of the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect. Take it from me. I battle every day, every day with my uh, trials, with my tribulations. Uh, I, I should say with my afflictions as well. And yet it's important for me, and I'm telling you, it is important for you to be able to rejoice. Even in bad times, rejoice in the Lord. God is with you. And then in James, we see uh, James chapter 1, verse 2. It says, count it all as joy. James goes, he goes all the way with it. Count it all as joy, my brothers, he says, when you meet trials of various kinds. One of the worst messages that's out there, one of the most incomplete messages being put out there by a lot of uh, religious leaders, evangelists, is this thing where somehow you're going to live in bliss here on earth. What a crock of It is the most horrific, one of the most horrific messages out there. And it's out there, but people love those messages because people want to say that I'm going to live in bliss and stuff like that. When the Bible specifically says that we should take up our cross and follow him, that we will be persecuted. And here we have Paul talking about rejoice in the Lord, rejoice in hope, even through trials and tribulations. You have James talking about count it all as joy, even when you meet all types of tribulations or trials in your life. I'm not making this up, but you have to decide whether the Bible is real to you. You have to decide whether this is historical fact. Or if this is some sort of bedtime story or some sort of folk story that you are just continuing to pass down to your uh, uh, children and grandchildren. The fact is that this is the world we are living in. And it's interesting when I sat, when I sit back or I hear people uh, whining and complaining uh, they act as if, as if the world is at a place that it's never been at before. Well, read scripture, and I can tell you, that's not true. And we ourselves can look at our own history in the 60s and in the 70s. And, in the, you know, it's like every decade we have all this stuff going on. It's incredible the way people are reacting to gas prices nowadays. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but they're acting like gas prices never went up. Ever. Like it's the end of the world. Not the end of the world. Rejoice in the Lord. Pray. Yeah, let's pray so that those gas prices will come down. But don't act like it's the end of the world. Trials and tribulations have been around forever. And like I said, it'll continue to be around. The question is, how are you going to deal with it? 
Well, I'll tell you my secret. I have found that through Christ Jesus, I can deal with it. I don't feel like I have to take my life. I don't feel like, like it's the end of the world, like it's doomsday every day. But, but you see what happens when people have no hope in God. You see what happens. You're looking at it in real time. They start to kill themselves. They start to kill others. They have no decency or respect for human life. A relationship with God, a relationship with Jesus Christ, allowing for that anointing of the Holy Spirit will make you a decent person. And if you're not decent, it's because you don't have a relationship. It's because you have not been anointed by the Holy Spirit. I've been asked so many times, oh, pastor, oh, chaplain, oh, this, that, the other. What are we going to do? What has to be done? I said, we need common decency. Just common decency and courtesy. How about some of that? Ooh, there's something new. I'll finish with this. Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. And I'll finish with this because, because after services, if you can go take a walk or you can go sit somewhere or just, you know, sit in your own homes and, and meditate on what has been said. And I will post this up again, this message. I wanted to give you, remember when I said to, to check yourself in terms of hope, in terms of your relationship with God. So, so I wanted to give you Galatians 5.22 so that you can go ahead and, and at least have this little checklist. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. I mean, it goes on. I just wanted to use that one verse. How's your love? How's your love for others these days? No, I didn't say how's your love for, for your children only or for your grandchildren only or for your husbands, wives, lovers, partners. I'm not talking, I'm saying in general, how is your love lately? Where are you with joy? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Where are you there? Where are you with peace? Not only being a peacemaker, but uh, living with peace inside of yourselves. Where are you with patience when it comes to others? Where are you with kindness? Where are you with goodness? Where are you with faithfulness? In general, where are you with common decency? This is what the church should be asking itself. This is what Christian leaders should be asking their congregants. This is what Christian leaders should be working on for themselves. What does the day of Pentecost mean to you? Have you received the anointing of the Holy Spirit? Have you been sealed by the Holy Spirit? The reason I, I, I read this last passage is because is when we talk about the fruits of the Spirit, it must be tangible, it must be noticeable. That, that beautiful change that happens on the inside because of 
the Holy Spirit because of that relationship with Jesus Christ must be able to be seen on the outside or something may be wrong. So I say, let's bring meaning back to the day of Pentecost. Let's bring a meaning back to a relationship with God, our relationship as Christians with Jesus Christ. Let's bring, let's bring meaning back to the words love and, and re rejoicing and hope and peace and patience and common decency. Let's bring meaning. Let's bring all this back. It's what the world needs. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. What does, what does that prayer mean to you? You can find this message as well as other messages on my YouTube channel, Rev. Dr. Marcos Miranda. I'll post it up as well. You can reach out to me. Those that, uh, I hope that those that requested the, uh, uh, the, uh, the oils uh, that they received their packages already. And if you wish to have um, the, the uh, anointing oil and, and, and a little booklet on mental health and emotional wellness, uh, it's totally free. Just um, send your name and address to actioninchrist at gmail.com. Actioninchrist at gmail.com. Those who requested it, the packages went out a couple of weeks ago. I hope they received it. I think we had some people even from outside, who may have heard the message and, and requested it. So I'm, I'm glad that we were able to do that. If you wish to donate, um, you can do that at our website, actioninchrist.com. Actioninchrist.com. Today, is, as we celebrate the day of Pentecost, as you think about what we've just, what you've just heard, um, it is a beautiful day, as our sister Dammer said. It is a beautiful day. It is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. God bless you. God keep you. And I will see you uh, next time. Bye-bye.